One trip to Bandon Dunes and you are hooked. It has that kind of effect on a golfer. And if you love this game, it is a trip you just have to make, hosting the 120th U.S. Amateur for the very first time. Seventh USGA Championship staged here along the beautiful Oregon coast. Match three, pitting Philip Barbary, 22-year-old from LSU who won the Junior Amateur Champ in 2015 against 21-year-old Matthew Sharpstein who transferred from West Virginia to Charlotte. Sharpstein for birdie to win the hole at the fourth. Barbary has won just one hole while Sharpstein has won four of the first nine to grab a commanding three-up lead. He needs to make something happen here. That is about as good as we've seen. To a tough par for Barbary. And he got it. Boy, so. that, that's a tough break. You catch a gust and ball on the low side, and it just rolls out another five feet. It was just earlier, second for Sharpstein at the par 5 13th. Yeah, he's pounded one way down there, just going with a short iron. His lead now just two up over Barbary, and that is a beauty. Two putts to win the hole for Sharpstein, for Eagle. Why not just roll it in? So Sharpstein quickly gains the back, the momentum after Barbary had won two of the last three holes. King's green protected by a dune behind the green. The wind shouldn't have as much effect on these putts. It's good to be crunch time for Barbary. Three down, rolls it right in. Three up with four to play and in control. Oh boy. Barbary four, Sharpstein four, Sharpstein remains three up. Tee shot for Sharpstein to the par three. This guy can really flight his irons down. He's like, he may have hung this out to the right just a touch. Okay, carried the bunker, but he's gonna have the same putt we saw Stuart Hagestad with. Missed this putt out onto the right. Yeah, you can't hit it far enough to the left here, it, it seems. I mean, that was just yeah. never even close to being far enough. Yeah, left. that mound really kicked it back to the right. The wind never really brought it back. As a chance here, this is must make time for Barbary three down. Chance to get it two down with three to play. Yeah, and he's got it in the proper spot here, putting back up the hill into the wind, a putt he can be aggressive with. Oh. Wow. 16 Barbary with his third as he is scrambling three down against Sharpstein. Yeah, coming up in the area. And that's it. We've got the first semifinalist, and it's... 21-year-old Matthew Sharpstein with a 4-2 victory over Barbary. Stuart Hagestad, the lone mid-am to make it this far against Georgia Tech's Tyler Strafacci. Even though Hagestad won the opening hole, Strafacci battled back, won the second, and then look at this tee shot at the par 3 sixth. 159 yards of birdie there gave Strafacci a one-up lead. It was, was two up, Hagestad has battled back. And then for Eagle at the ninth, reaching that green easily in two, it's downwind, and that's how they stand through 11. As we go out to the 12th, this was just a moment ago, Strafacci for par, nursing that one-up lead with his dad, Frank, on the bag. And right in the heart, so Tyler Strafacci, who will play another year of golf at Georgia Tech. Hagestad, though, for par to tie the hole with that long putter, six foot five, 29 year old, mid amateur champion from a few years ago, walks that right in. So Hagestad is hanging tough. So Strafacci being tested by this shot, third at the par five. Yeah, he's got lots of green to work with up to this left hole location. Still difficult to judge. That's a nice job there, and he's left in a good spot there, putting back into the wind. I deserve to be here and focus in on the rest of the way. Right, it was such a bizarre ending to that match. And usually when you're moving on in a match play situation, 
uh, you've done something great in order to earn your way through and to feel like in some small way it was given to you. I think that was a hurdle that he's obviously overcome beautifully because of the way he's playing and makes that birdie putt to go two up through 13. Nicely, just hasn't got any right to left help yet. Yeah, got over the bunker, but that's gonna leave a really tricky putt. Able to get it on the putting surface. You cannot miss this short and right. So we'll go double boxes again. Both of these guys, Hagestad upper left and Gupta trying to tie up the match. Putts are very similar in length. Stad got it to go down to the penalty area, but he's okay. 152 yards, Dan, and as Justin mentioned, a very severe green here. And if I'm catting this spot, I'm telling my man, you've got to get this ball to the hole. If it comes up 20 or 30 feet short, it could roll backwards towards the front of the green off a severe mogul. Nope. Oh, get on the ground. Up in the left to right wind. The one place you can't hit it still. And that play. looked to be flirting with the penalty area, guys. That was the only problem with that. Uh, for Hagestad. With, uh, Over to Strafacci. But Hagestad in the penalty area. Okay, able to get it over those mounds onto the back part of the green. Fly from the penalty area with his third, chopping it out. Wow, able to get a lot of spin on that. Remember that it's straight back into the wind and uphill. He's got to give this enough pace. Oh, he thought it was in. He was all ready to give it a little fist pump there. So close. Wow, that... That's just so disappointing as a player to leave a putt that you've got to make and leave it short. Great call by Bones. That putt is so slow going back up the hill. He certainly thought he had it. You're good. Like you said, you got room on that left side. What do you think of this, Bones? Oh, I love it, man. Hold on to your hats. Driver off the deck on the 18th hole. This is beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, 244 total, and he knows that he can actually hit this a little bit thin, if you will, and it'll still get under the wind and get very close to getting the green, so just important to get this on the right line. I love this play. Starts it out left, but overcutting. There's a penalty area over there right of this hole. And that appeared to go into the penalty area. Just trying to, to maybe overcut it a little too much, trying to get some air underneath it. Out to 18. All right, thanks, Burko. Strafacci's third to this par five. 100 Hagestad. yards. Yep. Go ahead, Just Bones. got to pull the right club and get it on the green and put all the pressure on Hagestad. And that will work. You can hear that. Also making it that much harder. Got it. And Strafacci advances for the second straight day at 18. A lot of drama for Tyler. But the Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket will have a chance to add another Georgia Tech name to the U.S. Amateur Havemeyer Trophy. And we talked about the stress that parents have, and especially when you're up close and personal. 18-year-old Michael Thor Bjornsson. Rising freshman at Stanford taking on Oklahoma State's Aman Gupta. And Thor Bjornsson has been flashing these skills all day long, and it began at the very first hole, his third at the par four. This is how he began his quarterfinal Friday. Right out of the gates on Gupta to take a one-up lead. And then out of position with his second at the short par four tenth, he hoists it way up into the air, into that wind, and that produced his sixth birdie of the day in the first 10 holes to grab a two-up lead over the Oklahoma State Cowboy. 
I don't know that he knows that that ball is over the green, so let's see how aggressive he gets here. It's on the same exact line as Gupta's. Let's see if this puts on the brakes. Yep. Yeah, great shot there, landing in the front third of the green. Thor Bjornsson just has a couple of putts from this distance to win the hole. And up the lead again on Gupta to two up. And he has left that short and made it a little interesting. Difficult, you know, four or five foot putt with these big crosswinds to deal with. But he saw this ball run out, so it should just maybe come a touch to his left. Oh, he knew it. Hit it perfect, and he's got a bogey, and that's going to make this a tougher par attempt for Thor Bjornsson. It's interesting today. Uh, I said, how are you dealing with these conditions? He said, you know, he's really thought a lot about his time spent at Royal Melbourne playing a golf course that was so firm, so fast, and how it's helped him prepare for this week. And unfortunately, he three putts here to tie here at 12, and it looked like, uh, you know, he was going to walk away out of here two up. Back over to 13th in the second for Thor Bjornsson. That was a pitching wedge, just full yeah. blast. See if he can get it to cover onto the green. Go! Go! Great shot, dude. What a number. Oh, that lands it just on the yeah, fringe there. It yeah, took a really soft bounce, yeah, able to keep it on the green. So big advantage here for Michael Thor Bjornsson. This is the strong point of his game. Is known for to have a great short game. Well, Noda, we've seen him make, I think, make you know more feet of putts throughout this. This now the third day of match play than any other player. That was a confident stroke, and that is a heck of an up and down for Birdie. And back at 13, Thor Bjornsson for Birdie to tie the hole. All right, so it's a two-putt birdie for Thor Bjornsson, and he's thinking, man, that barely got in. 91 left. Thor Bjornsson has already come up short, so Gupta with a chance here to put some pressure on Michael, and he throws a dart in there. Back at 15, a testy little par three. Gupta just tied up the match with Thor Bjornsson. A good shot there, catching the left side of the green, pin high. Who has seen Gupta win to the last four holes to tie it up. Oh my. Uh oh. Right on the edge of the penalty area. Ball just got too high in the air and the wind just grabbed it. 15, Gupta, all he needs with Thor Bjornsson's struggles here is two putts to win the hole. And Gupta has his very first lead of the match through 15. Shouldn't panic here, just needs to play solid golf. This one much higher on the very same line. That is one powerful swing. Gets a big hop. end up in a very similar position. Oh, it stops close up there, so maybe in a little better spot. So he was much left with much shorter distance than Gupta. And you can see just how much those balls check up. Big putt for Thor Bjornsson, who ties it up. And uh, he had a very tough approach putt, Justin. Did a nice job to get it right about six feet from the hole. And has a huge opportunity here to take a one-up lead headed into the last hole. This shouldn't do much, but maybe go a little to his right. In this matchup of power and finesse, Amin Gupta. will indeed take a one-up lead to the last. 
Bjornsson has to win this hole to extend it. At 273, he can get it maybe to that front edge, but it's going to take a huge effort. That was pounded. He just ripped that down the left side, but it's drawing and hold up in the wind. It's not moving back. And it got over the dune and over the rough, but that's going to leave a nearly impossible shot. It does happen to pull it, which is kind of a tendency when you're trying to really keep one down into a left to right wind. Uh, it should come back and feed towards the hole. Down. Down. This is lost it just a little right, but not going to be terrible. No, that's just fine. Pin high, putting back up the hill and into the wind. That's a great play. Yep. A bit of momentum to carry itself onto the green, and then we'll stop inside that 10 foot circle. But otherwise, this is a tough proposition. I was just thinking the first thing he had to do was get it on the green, give himself a decent putt at it. Have that for par. In the meantime, Gupta just nursed it down there and getting it done. Another Oklahoma State Cowboy has a chance to win this championship. And Alan Bratton continues his magical ride of caddying in this championship, giving another player a chance to win it all. Fourth and final quarterfinal match features Cameron Sisk of Arizona State, who got into match play on a playoff Wednesday morning. But Ali Osborne has gotten the better of the Arizona State Sun Devil. Osborne trying to win another U.S. Amateur title for the Mustangs. Checking out this second shot at the par four fifth. Beautifully judged. And Osborne would win it. Osborne for bogey. Sisk has a short bogey putt as well. And it's a double for Osborne. So Sisk will have another opportunity here to win his first hole. He just gave it to him. So that's how Cameron Sisk wins his very first hole of this Friday. 13 shot difference between his two stroke play days for part of win the hole now. And Good Sisk has three. it going. He was four down. Osborne, four. Now he's cut it in half. Mr. Osborne is two up. It's Ali Osborne over at 13 for Eagle to win the hole. Yeah, this from long range, got it into the back part of this green. Trying to get it up and over a ridge right there. Just pounded that. Now there's a little. Should come back a little back bit. There. Not going to make it all the way back. This would be three in a row for Cameron Sisk, and he is on a roll. Over at 14 from the dune, Osborne had to take an unplayable. So scrambling here at this par four. And look at this shot by Ollie Osborne, nearly hold it. That was from on top of the dune back behind the green. So he must have lost his ball. It took an unplayable from there. For Osborne's bogey to tie it. Not able to pull it off. Would have been an incredible save from the dune but instead Cameron Sis continues this momentum he's won four holes in a row see at 15 Ollie Osborne for par to take the lead again after Sis came back on him and Osborne takes the one up lead with three to play Sis second gonna play that low pitch out well short of the green and that's pretty well done there. And Osborne is long left. No, back at 16. This is where we were talking about Osborne was. Yeah, back into the wind, can pitch it all the way over the slope. Beautiful shot by Ollie Osborne of SMU. So now Osborne with a chance to grab a two up lead with two to play. Wow, so after Sisk won four holes in a row, Ollie's bounced back with two winning holes of his own. Back at 17, Sisk. Yeah, needs to get one all the way back to this whole location. Get it over those little ridges. And that's going to come up short as well. So hard to get yourself to fly it all the way back there. He's going to win this hole to extend it with Ollie Osborne. Osborne now next with a chance to lock it up here. 
for it to go further to the right. And once again, comes up short of that massive ridge. Molly Osborne with a crazy train of a putt here, guys. Up over two moguls. Going hard to left at the end. Got to go. And that's going to do it. Impressive putt there for Ali Osborne, who occupies the final spot in the two matches tomorrow. Two and one victory over Cameron Sisko. Gave it a go. He was four down. He won four in a row to square it up. And then it's Osborne who wins these final two to put it away. Ali Osborne through. He'll take on Matthew Sharpstein of Charlotte as we take a look at the upcoming USGA schedule presented by Rolex.